Hey there internets, I'm Michael and today on Two Can Play That Game, join me as I teach you how to play Food Fighters by Kids Table Board Gaming. So let's take it to the table. So to set up the game, the first thing you're going to want to do is pick a side, either the green veggies or the red meaties. Once you've done that, you'll take the nine tiles and three cards that relate to that side. You'll then lay them out so that they're facing off against each other. This is going to be your front line of battle, and these are, of course, then your back lines. The area up the top here is called your pantry, and this is what you'll be able to buy using these beans here. So each player has their own separate pantry with their own special power cards that are different for the different teams. And you can see in the bottom right the cost in beans to purchase the power. The symbol on the left here then indicates when you can use that power or what happens to the card when you use it. If it's got the infinity symbol then it stays in play. If it has the X like this one here then it gets discarded after use and the lightning bolt means it's an immediate effect that gets returned to the pantry. So the other items we have in the pantry here is we have these little cute wooden spoons and these little wooden pans, as well as three of these yellow crackers. The costs for these are given on the card at the bottom here. Also, the cost here is for this red dice that you can also purchase. Now, you can only purchase an item if you haven't already used one on that turn. The other things we have here is the white dice. Now, both these dice are different and you'll always roll them together. So let's see, that's all the game set off, we're ready to face. The one thing we still need to do is pick who's going to go first. So just randomly determine this and then that player will start the game with their turn. So the structure of a turn is that you first have three choices. You may either roll for beans, swap or attack. So let's talk a bit about what each of those is. Rolling for beans, you'll simply take your two white dice and roll them. Any of these green splats that come up, you will re-roll. The number of beans shown on the dice is the number of beans you would then collect into your reserve. You're then able to spend these at the end of your turn to buy something, and I'll talk about that when we get to that stage. The next action is to swap. So if you have two people that you want to swap within your formation, you can swap one from any one place to any other place. So let's say we wanted to swap this, these two here actually, so that they can face off against both of those. So we just simply switch the positions of the tiles and then we get a bean. When you do a swap, you get a bean. However, you can swap into an empty space. So say we had an empty space here, because this had gone away, and we wanted to move this guy over here. In order to swap this card to here, where it was an empty space, we can simply do the swap. And the final option is to attack, which is where things start to get interesting. Now, you actually do this pretty much the same way as you do rolling for beans, but you first have to designate who is attacking and who is the target. Now, who someone can attack is dictated by the little thought bubble here. So this little cabbage here can attack this stake because he has a picture of a stake and you can attack diagonally if need be. So if we look at the bacon here, he can attack here, the broccoli can attack here, and the steak here can attack no one. But this broccoli can attack this bacon here because it's diagonal. Once you've decided who's attacking, you will simply roll the dice. If you get nothing but beans, you'll collect that many beans. If you roll a splat, that is a hit, and you kill that tile and you claim it. 
Now, to win the game, you'll need to kill three of the same tile. So, three bacon, three chicken legs, three steaks, for example. Once you've got a set of three, you have one. So, once you have done either your rolling for beans, your swapping, or your attack, keeping in mind you can only ever do one of these, then is your opportunity to spend beans to buy things from your pantry. And keep in mind that you'll only have got beans if you missed on an attack or you rolled for beans, or you may have got one for doing a swap. You'll then spend the cost of whatever you want to buy back into the supply and then claim that item. So I'm not going to go through all the special powers, but let's talk a bit about the different items that you can buy. So we have here the spoon, and the spoon will allow you to attack at range. So when you buy this, you must give it to someone, and they can then attack at range. So this onion could now attack either of these chicken legs. Also, you can attack diagonally still with doing this. So if we gave it to this onion, for example, he could attack this steak here. Now it's important to note that when you perform an attack with someone who has a spoon, they will lose that spoon whether or not they hit or miss. And of course, having used a spoon that turn, you wouldn't be able to then buy one during your buy phase. The next item we have is the frying pan. And the way this works is again, it's one that you'll need to equip to a character. You give it to your character. So let's say we put this here. No, actually, that's silly. We'll put it there. <laughs> you cover up, when you equip, you cover up your thought bubble here. So that now means that that character can attack anything they want. And also, they don't lose the frying pan if they miss. They'll only have to discard this back to the pantry if they hit with it. The final item is the crackers. Again, you'll put these in the hands of one of your creatures and they act as a shield. Whenever a splat gets rolled on the dice, you would instead destroy a cracker. So if someone had one cracker, you'd need to roll two splats in a single attack in order to kill them. And then the final thing to do on a turn is to fill any gaps. For example, the meaties here have a gap at the front line here that they have to fill in. Now, to fill this gap, they have to take someone from their back line. They can't take someone from the middle. Uh, they can pick which one they want to take, though, and they then put them into the front line here. So, bacon is kind of vulnerable over here, so they're going to take this chicken leg and slot him in there. You'll then keep taking turns like this until someone has managed to kill three of a kind and they then win the game. And that is how you play Food Fighters. I do hope that you found this video interesting and entertaining and hopefully useful too. And if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.